in this video, we're going to be testing out official SteamOS on an Apple iMac. What I've got here is a 2019 21.5 inch iMac that I recently picked up from Craigslist for a hundred bucks. It's actually not a bad little setup and we'll go over the specs in just a bit. And yeah, this is official Steam OS. I use the Steam Deck recovery image to get this installed over here. And I do want to mention that if you've got an older iMac with an Intel based CPU, chances are it may not work with integrated graphics. You will need a Radeon GPU. And that's kind of why it took me a while to make this video. I needed to get my hands on something with an AMD GPU built in. So again, 2019, and it's not a super spec'd out 21.5 inch iMac either. Installation was pretty simple. There are a few things that aren't working here though. Now Bluetooth is working, but unfortunately I just couldn't find any batteries. And I tried this 8-BitDo controller here, but the mappings are all messed up and I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, it could just be SteamOS or it could be the fact that, you know, we've got it installed on a Mac. Not exactly sure. I do need to look a bit deeper into it. And there's one main thing that isn't working here. That's internal audio. So the speakers on this iMac are not working with SteamOS. I'm using a USB sound card. But other than that, you can actually game on this thing. So to get this installed on the iMac was actually pretty simple. I used the Steam Deck recovery image just on a USB drive. Uh, once I flashed it there, Boot it up the iMac, and while you're booting it up, you're gonna hold Alt if you're using a Windows keyboard. If you've got a Mac keyboard, it's gonna be Control. Kind of brings us into the boot menu. Now there is one thing to note. If you've got an older version without a Fusion Drive, if you're not familiar with the Fusion Drive, basically it's got a 32 gig SSD and whatever mechanical storage you opted, this one has a one terabyte drive. SteamOS, without modifying anything, can only be installed to a SSD. So I just installed it to the 32 gig Fusion section on the drive itself. And uh, the reason we're actually able to game on this is because it's got a Radeon GPU. It's actually a dedicated GPU. And if we head over to settings, system, real SteamOS Hollow 3.7.13, now it's a pretty low end system by today's standards. We've got an Intel Core i5-7500 up to 3.8 and I've only seen it really boost up to 3.6. Four cores, four threads, so nothing spectacular. And system memory on this is only eight gigs. And by the way, it is possible to upgrade the RAM on this, but it involves taking the front screen out and basically every other component to get to the RAM modules. And from there, you just install DDR4, I believe this has. I could go through the process and upgrade, but I'm gonna leave it just like this to see what it does. But the big reason I wanted to pick this iMac up is because it's actually got the Radeon RX 560X. It's not a super high-end GPU. It's based on Polaris. We've only got four gigs of RAM. And by the way, it's G DDR5 RAM. So this thing isn't gonna be running Cyberpunk at 4K, but I still wanted to see what we could do with this. I mean, it would be worth kind of salvaging something like this because this wasn't being used. I got it for a hundred bucks on Craigslist and I really wanted to see if I could get some more use out of it. And we could install basically any operating system. You could go with Windows here, different version of Linux, but of course we had to test out SteamOS on this thing. Another thing I've installed here just to see if it would help out with performance is a uh, simple Decky TDP control. And Simple Decky TDP is really made for handhelds. Basically, we can do up to 40 watts. This is a 65 watt part, but uh, in this iMac, I'm not sure if we can really boost up there and keep it cool enough. So I'm set at 40 watts here, and I'll test it with and without. CPU boost is enabled. Uh, our CPU governor is set to performance. We can totally disable all of this, so we can just let it go uh, You know, with the factory settings. But uh, I wanted to see if it would actually work at all. So we'll get into a little bit of gaming with it. Moving over a bit, we've got our performance overlay, just like we would with uh, the Steam Deck. Remember, we've only got four cores and four threads here, and HDR is listed, but it's not gonna do HDR with the display here. Only up to 60 hertz. We could disable the frame limiter if we want to, but I'm gonna kinda just see if we can even get some of these games up to 60 FPS. Half rate shading actually might come in handy. Manual GPU clock. And it actually looks like it may work for this RX 560X. So yeah, this only does up to like 900 megahertz. And we want as much as we can get out of this thing. So I'll test that in game just to see if it helps out. But with that out of the way, let's jump into some gaming and see what happens with this thing. And we're gonna start out kind of light here. 
and we'll go with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Okay, so here it is. This game actually runs pretty decently. Originally, I went into this at 1080 medium settings, but I had a few dips here and there, so I backed it off to 900p. This 21.5 inch iMac has a 4K display, but we're not going to be running games at 4K. For the most part, I think we may have to drop a lot of this stuff down to 720. Older games and indie games may be able to run at 1080, but uh, we'll see what happens. I've got a few more that I wanted to test here. Moving over to another easier to run game, we've got Hades 2, still a lot of fun here. We're at 1080p high settings, and for the most part, steady 60. A couple dips here and there, down to 57, but it's something I'd never notice if I didn't have that frame counter on screen. Now, one thing I will tell you is uh, when caching shaders on this thing with that four core, four thread CPU, sometimes it can take quite a while. Fallout 4 didn't do very well at all, and when you boot this up in SteamOS, you're going to get the Steam Deck version. Unfortunately, we just can't change the settings on this, and it's still pretty low end. I mean, it's made to run on the Steam Deck. We just can't run it at 60 with this system. Here's a game that did pretty decently. We've got Drive, medium settings, 900p. Now there was an area where it did dip under 60 and I unlocked the frame rate here just to see what would happen. It actually seems to run a bit better with the frame rate unlocked. Moving back to some older stuff like Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life, and even Portal, you're going to be able to run this over 100 FPS on average, 1080p, high settings. I didn't max this out because I actually didn't know what to expect, but I'm pretty sure we could go to those very high settings with this game here and still get a really good frame rate. Now it's time to take it up a bit, and I'm not expecting much out of this. We've got Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low settings. FSR is on, it's just set to balance from that low preset, and even going to performance doesn't help out that much. We can't get this to lock down at 60 with the way it is right now, but I did want to try some frame gen. Don't think it's going to work out very well, but we'll go ahead and enable it and see what happens. And yeah, it actually felt better without frame gen on. So we're using those same settings, 720p, low, but we're using FSR 3 frame generation. And this thing just can't keep up. A lot of ghosting going on, and it just feels really weird like this. So I would probably just want to play this at 30 FPS, 720p, if I had to play it on something like this. And the final game I wanted to test here was Forza Horizon 5. Very low, 900p, and if you take a look at that FPS, some cases we do get over 90, but we're just running out of VRAM here. Looks like system RAM isn't too horrible with a lot of the games that I tested, but we're limited by that four gigs of VRAM, and we've also only got those four cores with no extra threads. And I know this is an easier one to run, but I'm still pretty impressed that it actually ran it pretty decently at this very low setting. So when it comes down to it, I mean, using something like this for gaming with SteamOS isn't going to be ideal for everybody. But if you're getting into one of these for super cheap and you wanted a different operating system to mess around with, you can run older games, you can run indie games on something like this. But would I run out and buy one of these specifically to install SteamOS on? Uh, probably not. Unless you can get one of these for really cheap, I don't think it would be worth it. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're just rocking one of these with integrated Intel graphics, chances are at the time I'm making this video, you're not going to get official SteamOS installed. You could probably install something like Bazai, but in order to get that full Steam Deck experience, you will need an AMD GPU, at least at the time I'm making this video. And Apple did make quite a few of these. This one has that RX 560X, and I believe they made one with an RX 550. But again, I wouldn't run out looking for one of these specifically to install SteamOS on. Either way, still impressed that it installed and ran. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, like maybe some emulation in uh, SteamOS, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.